Hello there, welcome to Porch In It. This is Kim. Thank you for coming to my porch. We are getting into day 308. <clears throat> Today is 308 and it's Matthew 22 and Mark 12. So we're jumping around between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John right now. And um, it's chronological. We're doing a chronological Bible plan. We've been doing it for 308 days, like I said. So we started in the beginning in January, and now this is coming to the end. And so it's been a lot of fun reading through the Bible in a year with you all this year. And uh, especially chronologically, I picked a chronological plan, a newer one, that seemed pretty precise from what I read about. <clears throat> So um, this is the blue letter edition. Um, if you want to look it up, you can always look it up. It's the blue letter edition, and it's chronological through the Bible, the chronological. So anyway, tonight is 308, Matthew 22, and Mark 12, Matthew 22, Mark 12. So it's been a lot of fun going through this because especially now we're going through I love reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John anyway during the holidays, especially because this is the time of Jesus, the time of his birth, the time of his life, and it's just exciting with the holidays. <clears throat> Thanksgiving's my favorite holiday of all. Um, between that and Christmas, I'm like... But my birthday's on Thanksgiving, so that's what part of the. And also, we lived in the country, so the snow would be falling now, and it was always so beautiful. The leaves would fall, and then the snow would start coming at the end of the month. So right now, the leaves would still be um, falling, and um, pretty leaves, and I love all this. So, so anyway, praise the Lord. It's where you live, and it's what kind of lifestyle you live with your family. It's community. That's what makes up a person. We were just learning that in homeschool tonight or the other night about community. What makes up a personality? It's the family that they live with, the parents, the way they interact, um, community and your church and school. <clears throat> and so and where you're at where what kind of what kind of area you're in and everything so my life was all in the mountains it was New York State and it was real country and colorful floor um cool and colorful in November and I loved it and then the, the lights would come on in the in the end part of November and all the pretty the exciting Christmas you know season so praise the Lord I love it <clears throat> And tonight I just came home from uh, going to the grocery store to pick a few things up and I found this little um, blanket. It was a little like cozy blanket that you put on and it said fall, it had fall leaves with the pumpkin pies and, and so I had to get it, of course. And <laughs> so praise you, Lord. We thank you for this evening. Thank you for this word to us. Thank you for this this. This time, 308, this day, Lord God, that we've gone through the Bible all these days and that, Lord, we're in these um, <clears throat> the gospel truths. And we just thank you for it's the good gospel, the good news of the gospel. And we just praise you and thank you that we're reading, we're receiving, and we're speaking it, we're doing it, we're listening to you, we're minding you, Lord. We're listening to the way you're speaking to us because every day when we get in the word, it is words to us personally. And all of us, Lord, as we read together, we are getting your word, we are getting truths, we are getting stories, we're getting fed faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And we just thank you for that, Lord, because that's what we live by is by faith. And that's what pleases you, you said in Hebrews 11, or Hebrews 6, I believe, Hebrews 6 talks about. So praise you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this word to us, and just minister through my mouth, Lord, words that you would have me speak or sing or pray or say, Lord God, in Jesus' name, scripture verses, whatever it is, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this time of year. Thank you for the fall season, the harvest, all my... We thank you that it's harvest time now, and we praise you, Lord. Everything that's up in my house is harvest. 
so it's harvest season and that's why I, I have everything harvesty. All right, Matthew 22, and I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible. And then Mark 12, you could run over to Mark 12 if you want to be ready for me. Mark 12, we'll be right, running right into it. Okay, and again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, comparison stories used to illustrate and explain saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son and sent his servants to summon those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they refused to come. Again, he sent other servants saying, tell those who are invited, behold, I have prepared my banquet, my bullocks and my fat calves are killed and everything is prepared, come to the wedding feast. But they were not concerned and paid no attention. They ignored and made light of the summons, treating it with contempt, and they went away, one to his farm, another to his business. While the others seized, his servants treated them shamefully and put them to death. Hearing this, the king was infuriated, and he sent his soldiers and put those murderers to death and burned the city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding feast is prepared, but those invited were not worthy. So go to the thoroughfares where they leave the city, where the main roads and those from the country end and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out on the crossroads and got together as many as they found, both bad and good. So the room in which the wedding feast was held was filled with guests. But when the king came in to view the guests, he looked intently at the man there who had on no wedding garment. And he said, friend, how did you come in here without getting on the wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him into the darkness outside. There will be weeping and grinding of teeth for many are called invited invited and summoned, but few are chosen. Then the Pharisees went and consulted and plotted together how they might entangle Jesus in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you're a sincere and what you profess to be, that you teach the way of God truthfully, regardless of consequences and being afraid of no man for you are impartial and do not regard either the person or the position of anyone tell us then what you think about this is it lawful to pay tribute to caesar or not but jesus aware of their malicious plot asked why do you put me to the test and try to entrap me you pretenders you hypocrites Show me the money used for the tribute. And they brought him a Daenerys. And Jesus said, Whose likeness and title are these? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Pay therefore to Caesar the things that are due to Caesar, and pay to God the things that are due to God. When they heard it, they were amazed and marveled, and they left him and departed. The same day some Sadducees, who say that there is no resurrection of the dead, came to him and they asked him a question saying teacher Moses said if a man dies leaving no children his brother shall marry the widow and raise up a family for his brother now there was seven brothers among us the first married and died and having no children left his wife to his brother the second also died childless and the third down to the seventh last of all the women died also now in the resurrection to which of the seven will she be wife? For they all had her. But Jesus replied to them, You are wrong because you know neither the scripture nor God's power. For in the resurrected state, neither do men marry, nor are women given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. But as it is to the resurrection of the dead, have you never read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the throng heard it, they were astonished and filled with amazement at his teaching. Now when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced, muzzled the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of the number, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. 
Teacher, which kind of commandment is great and important? The principal kind in the law? Some commandments are light, which are heavy. And he replied to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, your intellect. This is the great, most important principle and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. These two commandments sum up and upon them depend all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were still assembled there, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think of the Christ? Whose son is he? And they said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David thus calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone venture or dare to question him. Okay, now turn to Mark 12. Okay, Mark 12. It's going to be similar because this is a chronological plan, so they're going to show you how these two chapters or whatever chapters I usually read are usually the same. They're just in a different way. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all have the same story, but they're told by three, by four different disciples. Okay, so Mark 12 says, And Jesus started to speak to them, in parables with comparisons and illustrations, a man planted a vineyard and put a hedge around it and dug a pit for the wine press and built a tower, left out and left it out for rent to vine dressers and went into another country. When the season came, he sent a bond servant to the tenants to collect from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. But they took him and beat him and sent him away without anything. Again, he sent to them another bond servant, and they stoned him and wounded him in the head and treated him shamefully, sending him away with insults. And he sent another, that one they killed, then many others, some they beat and some they put to death. He had still one left to send, a beloved son. Last of all, he sent him to them saying, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, Here is the heir, come on, let us put him to death, and the inheritance will be ours. And they took him and killed him and threw his body outside the vineyard. Now what will the owner of the vineyard do? He will do he will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not even read this passage of scripture? The very stone which after putting it to the test, the builders rejected, has become the head of the cornerstone. This is from the Lord and it's his doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they were trying to get hold of him, but they were afraid of the people for they knew what he spoke, this parable in reference to and about them, against them. So they left him and departed, but they sent some of the Pharisees and the Herodians to him for the purpose of entrapping him in his speech. And they came up and said to him, teacher, we know that you are sincere in what you profess to be, that you cannot lie and that you have no personal bias for anyone, for you are not influenced by partiality and have no regard for anyone's external condition or position, but in and on the basis of truth, you teach the way of God. Is it lawful, permissible, and right to give tribute to Caesar or not? Taxes. Should we pay them or should we not pay them? But knowing their hypocrisy, he asked them, Why do you put me to the test? Bring me a coin, a denarius, so I may see it. And they brought him one. Then he asked them, Whose image or picture is this? And whose superscript? superscription or title they said to him caesar's jesus said to them pay to caesar the things that are caesar's and to god the things that are god's and they stood marveling greatly amazed at him and some sadducees came to him of that party who say there is no resurrection and they asked him a question saying teacher moses gave us the law that if a man's brother died leaving a wife but no child the man must marry the widow and raise up other 
of offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one took a wife and died, leaving no children. The second brother married her and died, leaving no children. The third did the same, and all seven, leaving no children. Last of all, the woman died also. Now, in the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For the seven were married to her. Jesus said to them, Is not this where you wander out of the way and go wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For when they arise from among the dead, men do not marry, nor are women given to marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. Concerning the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the burning bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are very wrong. Then one of the scribes came up and listened to him, to them, disputing with one another and noticing that Jesus answered them fitly and admirably. He asked, which commandment is first and most important of all in its nature? Jesus answered, the first and principal one of all commands is the Lord our God is one. The Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God out of and with your whole heart, with your whole heart and soul and mind and strength and thought and out. And this is the first and principal commandment. I'm reading the Amplified. So with your faculty of thought and your moral understanding. So let me start it over at 30. You shall love the Lord your God out of, with your whole heart, out of and with your soul, your life, out of and with your mind, with your faculty of thought and your moral understanding, and out of and with all your strength. This is the first principle commandment. The second is like it in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, ex ex excellently, and fitly and admirably answered, Teacher, you have said truly that he is the one and there is no other but him. And to love him out of and with all the heart and with all the understanding, with the faculty of quick apprehension and intelligence and keenness of discernment and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered intelligently, discreetly, and having his wits about him, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one ventured to dare or dared to ask him any further questions. And as Jesus taught in a porch or court of the temple, he said, How can the scribes say that the Christ is David's son? David himself, inspired in the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool under your feet. David himself calls him Lord, so how can it be that he is the son? Now the great mass of people heard Jesus gladly listening to him in delight, with delight. And in the course of his teaching, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and get greetings in the marketplace and have the front seat in the synagogue and the chief couch couches the place of honor, at feasts, who devour widows' houses and cover it up, making long prayers. They will receive the heavier sense of condemnation. And as he sat opposite the treasury and saw how the crowd was casting money into the treasury, many rich people were throwing in large sums. And a widow who was poverty-stricken came and put in two copper mites, the smallest of coins, which together make half of a cent. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly and surely I tell you, this widow who is poverty stricken has put in more than all these contributing to the treasury. For they all threw, threw in out of bun abundance, but she out of her deep poverty has put in everything that she had, even all she had on which to live. Amen. So that's a good word. Praise the Lord. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for that word tonight to us. We thank you for 
we see, Lord God, how much you had to speak to people and, you know, come on, come in back to them, like with the way they were coming at you, you, you had a wisdom, you have, you have wisdom and you had such a, a way that you would just speak right back to them and give them what they basically was giving. If they were doing it in arrogance and, and trying to test you, you would just speak back to them in a com confidence, but in a way where, okay, you know, that they, that you were letting them know that they were not not going to get it over on them. And we thank you, Lord, that that you just kept up. You kept teaching. You kept preaching. You kept loving and giving of yourself. And even though the people were always trying to find a way to make you stumble or or find a way to make it you look bad, you were able to come out shining bright because the wisdom you had from your Father, the wisdom that you that you walked in and the way that you spoke and you kept your love you kept your love on but you didn't let them uh you know make you look or make it make you you didn't allow their foolishness to get away with themselves they needed to know the air of their way by the way you spoke and lord you want us to be this way you want us to be able to speak strongly and let people know, okay, we're not gonna give in to something that you're gonna try and, you know, think you're you're doing it in a way where you're you're mocking. No, God God says that the you know the the righteous take it by force. And that means that sometimes there's times to speak strongly back in a confidence and in a way to put the other side in their in their back in their shoes to show them who they are back into what they need to know that they are doing. Lord, sometimes it's good to show the air of the way. There's other times to just, you know, not say anything else, but Lord, we just thank you. There was times you did that too. And we thank you that you always gave and loved. And at the very end, as you saw this mite, this little woman with the mites that she put in these two small mites, and they only were two half small mites made a half of a penny at the time. But she gave out of her poverty. They gave out of much, out of, out of as they had much, so they were able to give much. But they gave out of their much. She gave out of her little. She didn't have, and she gave all she had. And so, Father, you, there's a real principle here. There's a humility here. There's a love here. There's a true understanding of your protection, your uh, provision. There's a real understanding here of you, your love, your love in this woman, your, your provision. She knew God would provide for her because she had nothing else, but she wanted to love God by giving. She wanted to love God by giving and putting that into the offering. And that's what the offering is about. It's, it's loving, it's giving, and it's trusting you. And so, Father, we thank you that you gave and gave and gave throughout these two script chapter passages. You just kept giving, even though those, those were trying to, you know, stump you up at times. You kept loving and giving anyway. And Lord, thank you for pointing out these different parables that you've shown us. And these the way that even they they went and they took the the air and they killed him and and it's like you Lord G God sent his only son but they crucified him so how much more your love is so great and we thank you Lord that you did rise again and you and you came and you showed yourself to the disciples and now you're in heaven you ascended to heaven you filled them with the Holy Spirit and you ascended to heaven and now we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. When we ask Jesus in our heart, we can also be filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered so we can speak and be witnesses and we can know how to speak back to the foolish people who try to outwit us and say things that are, that are foolish and that are actually mean. And we just thank you, Father, that you guard and protect us with the Holy Spirit. So I pray anybody who doesn't know Jesus, Lord, I ask them, ask you, Lord, to help them come to know you. Ask you into their heart right now. Say, Jesus, come in my heart. Be Lord of my life. Take my life and do something with it. 
I want you in my life. I'm sorry for my sin. I ask you to, I repent of all the past and I receive Jesus now. And I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to speak in other tongues. I want to be able to pray. I want to be able to witness for you. I want to have words to speak so I can be confident and speak like Jesus spoke. And I can speak as the Father tells me. I can hear the Holy Spirit. I can pray in tongues. And Lord, you will deliver me from things. You will show me things. You will lead me. You will you will give me wisdom and things that I need wisdom. And I just thank you right now for your word to me in Jesus' name. And remember to get into the word. You need the word. After you get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, you need the word. And then you need the word when you're older in the word, in the Lord. We all need the word every day. And that's why we've been doing this every day for a year, one year Bible. And so, um, praise you, Jesus. Just remember, he loves you so much. I'm so happy that you're saved. And remember, your words are your way to victory. I will see you tomorrow on Fortunate.